All right, so here we go with the last uh, lesson in unit number one. This is lesson G, working with irrational numbers. By the end of this video, you should be able to uh, complete the statement, I can calculate the sum and products of rational and irrational numbers. Okay, uh, this is with a calculator, so really should be pretty easy for you. Okay, so first of all, just a little reminder, irrational numbers, something you learned about previously in this unit, all right, are numbers that cannot be written in frac fraction form. All right, you're never ending, never repeating decimals. Okay, some examples, of course, pi, all right, your square root of 3, square root of 20, all right, most square roots. And then you see the question here, which I am not going to write. I want to make sure you're listening to the whole video. It says, are all square roots irrational? You're going to write this down. The answer is no, because, for example, the square root of 4 is 2. Okay, 2 is not an irrational number. Okay, so please write that down. No, square root of 4 equals 2 as your example. All right, let's move on to example one. By the way, if you don't have that written down, you're not getting credit for your homework. All right, so we're asked to estimate the sum or product to the nearest hundredth, okay, and then determine whether or not our answer is rational or irrational. All right, so using your calculator, you're going to do 3 plus square root of 5. All right, your calculator may just return the answer of 3 plus square root of 5, or you may see something that looks like this, all right, where you have 5... Point two three six, and it just keeps going. Okay. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is round this up to the nearest hundredth because that's what the directions told me to do right there. All right. So we're going to take a look at the hundredths place, which is right here. That six is going to tell that number to bump up. So that's five point two four. Okay. The second piece of this problem tells us to determine if the answer is rational or irrational. We're talking about the original answer, not this. Okay, when you add or multiply a number, a, a um, rational number by an irrational number, your result is going to be irrational. Okay, so looking at example B, again, nice and easy, plug it in your calculator, you're going to put 12.566, and again, it keeps going, going, going. All right, we're going to round here. That 6 is going to tell that 6 to bump up. All right, and once again, like I said in the previous one, when you take a rational number and multiply it by an irrational number, the result is an irrational number. Okay, example C. We have the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. All right, plug that into your calculator. Pause the video if you need to. Pause it, plug that into your calculator and see what you get. All right, were you surprised to see the number 5 come out? All right. Uh, obviously, that's a rational number. Okay? So, not always does an irrational times an irrational give you an irrational. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. All right? The reason why the answer is 5 is the way it works with irrational numbers is, all right, when you talk about square roots, you would multiply the inside pieces together, and the square root of 25 is 5. Okay? So, it could be simplified further in that case. All right, there's some new try problems. Remember, we'll do those in class. We'll leave those alone for right now. All right, let's take a look at example two. We're asked to find the area of the rectangle below and classify all the sets of numbers that the answer belongs to. Okay, so once again, finding area is simple. The area of a rectangle is very easy, length times width. All right, so we're going to multiply these two together. Notice how I'm including the units here. All right, so we're going to treat the numbers separate from the units, okay? And once again, this is just going right into your calculator, calculator 8 root 2 times root 2. All right, when you do that, you should end up with 16. Now, don't take my word for it, though. Please type this in. Know how to use your calculator. If you're not getting 16, obviously you don't know how to type that in. That's something you would ask your classroom teacher when you come in the next day. How do I get that square root block? Where is it at? All right, if you don't know. All right, now from there, an inch times an inch, it would be an inch squared. Okay, so notice I did my numbers first and then my units. All right, so what what's happening here, once again, before I get to the second half of that answer, is we're taking the square root of 8, I'm sorry, 8 root 2, and multiplying by the square root of 2. Okay, 
this is considered an outside number. All right, there's an invisible one in front of that. So we multiply the outside numbers and we multiply the inside numbers. The square root of 4, of course, is 2. We know that when there's not a symbol, it's multiplication. And that's where that 16 came from. Okay, so it's not a mystery. All right, it's not magic. It's very simple mathematics, and that's what's going on there. All right, now there's still a second piece of answer. I have to classify the sets of numbers, which my answer 16 belongs to. All right. And this belongs to a whole bunch of things. All right. First of all, it's a natural number or counting number. All right. It's whole. It's an integer. It is rational. And, of course, it's real. So that's all we know are real numbers right now. Okay. Also keep in mind that the unit is important with your answer. So the answer is not 16. It's 16 inches squared or 16 square inches. Okay, make sure you have that whole piece. All right, you're going to like this next part because there's the you try, and we're done. Pretty short lesson here today. All right, make sure you answer the I can statement. Okay, after watching this video, I can. Whatever you learned in this video, please put it on paper so we read it and uh, hopefully understand what you're saying. If you don't know how to do something in this video, like, for example, find the square root button on your calculator, put it down there. All right, and then again, Figure out if you go below here, what are you going to do to figure that out? Obviously, rewatching the video is not going to help you if you don't know how to use your calculator. All right, that might be something you, whoops, you do in class here, okay? Or maybe, you know, Math Resource Center or even a friend will probably help you with that pretty easily. All right, we'll see you tomorrow. Get ready for that test.